Hey everyone, John here at Generals and Napoleon. Yes, I saw the movie. Yes, it was visually impressive, and I will give you a full rundown on everything in just a minute. Uh, I want to see if any more folks will join. Um, first, I must say thank you to Ridley Scott, Joaquin Phoenix, David Scarpa, Apple and Sony Films, cast and crew. This movie, whether I say it's good or bad, has helped podcasts like mine, historical book authors, YouTube creators, and overall interest in this time period again. So thank you for that, Ridley Scott and the entire cast and crew. Okay, um, I'm going to try and do this without spoilers until the very end. Um, I'll basically just go over like, you know, what I thought of the movie, cinematography, costume design, music, writing, all that kind of stuff. How Joaquin did, how Vanessa did. Um, <laughs> one spoiler, uh, Napoleon loses Waterloo again in the movie. So hopefully that's not a spoiler for you. Um, initial review on a scale of one to ten. In terms of movies, uh, give it like a like a six. I mean, it's it's two and a half hours. So, in fairness to the story of Napoleon, I mean, the guy was in power for fifteen years. He was alive for fifty one. So, to sum up his life story in two and a half hours, it's uh, pretty difficult. So, I give them credit in trying to do that. Um, okay, jumping into everything without um, spoilers. I'll get to spoilers in a little bit. Joaquin. Great job. Joaquin Phoenix is a great actor. I know he does not have a Italian, Corsican, French accent from the 18th century, but I imagine that'd be kind of hard to pull off. So I didn't mind it after a while. You don't notice it. It's just Joaquin acting and he did a really good job. Um, his dialogue was good. He was arrogant in points. He was weak in points. He was a tyrant in points. So kind of like the the trailer mentions he was like all those things. Um, Vanessa as Josephine did a very good job. I think she portrayed Josephine as she pretty much was. Um, There's some timeline discrepancies, and obviously she was a lot younger than Josephine was. Uh, but again, we'll get to that. Um, everyone else in the movie was, was good. I mean, solid acting. Uh, the guy who played the Duke of Wellington was fine. Um the guy who played Barat was very good, Paul Barat. Uh, the Marshals, all right, this is a spoiler, so I'm going to go ahead if you want to jump ahead. The Marshals are barely in the movie, and when they are, they're just kind of non-entities. They barely have any talking lines. Uh, Nays in it, Debu's in it, uh, Bertier's in it, but I think that's it. I mean, how do you have a movie without Marshall Murat? The guy was all about drama and uh, eloquence and Dressing fancy. I don't know how Mira was not in that film, but we'll get to that. Um, cinematography. Mm, sorry, I'm enjoying my blend. So excuse me for one moment. It was, it was fine. Uh, the lighting was very good. Framing was good. I didn't see any repeat shots in there in terms of um, Ridley setting up, you know, camera angles and things. Uh, the battle scenes were well shot, different angles overhead, uh, side angles, lots of cannons blaring. So those of you who like artillery, you will not be displeased. Um, just looking at my list here, costumes. Very good. The cos Whoever did the costume design did a great job. Um, the Hussars looked like Hussars. The Old Guard looked like the Old Guard. Um, Josephine's outfits were impressive. The halls and palaces were impressive. So that part of it, they got very well. I mean, they nailed that part. I think costume design, they, they might get an Oscar award there. Music, um, I was hoping for some sweeping score. And um, there really wasn't. I mean, the music was fine. It was in the background. I thought it would be more dramatic or, or resonant. Like it really just didn't make an impression on me. It was, It was there, but it really didn't blow me away. Writing, um, David Scarpa, he, you know, he used some of the old lines that we know Napoleon has said and Josephine have said, but the, the writing was, uh, how do I put this? It was fine. I think if they had maybe like a mini series to, to write more or, or spread out storylines, like other than Napoleon and Josephine, there didn't see any, seem like any 
characters we could really get involved with. I mean, Hortense is barely in it. Eugene is barely in it. Um, I think they could have built some of the minor characters a little bit more uh, in, in filming the movie. But again, only two and a half hours. So I get it. Uh, direction. So Ridley Scott, obviously brilliant director. I mean, Alien, Black Hawk Down, Thelma and Louise, Blade Runner, Gladiator. Uh, I mean, the guy's uber talented. So I can't really fault any kind of direction. Uh, you know, he it was his driving force to bring this movie to the screen. So kudos to you, Ridley. I thought the direction was good. Overall, like I said, eh, six out of ten. Um, I didn't love it, but I liked it. I brought my teenage kids and they liked it. Uh, without knowing the whole backstory of Napoleon. Um, so there's that. Um, so yeah, overall six out of 10. Okay. Now I'm getting into spoilers of what, what I liked and didn't like uh, kind of line by line, blow by blow. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, just kind of watch this after you see the movie tomorrow or Thursday or whenever you go see it. Okay. So there's like an opening scroll in the movie and it talks about the French revolution, 1789, they give you a lot of timestamps in this movie, which makes sense. They got to show you what's going on. So <clears throat> they open like a, a little opening scroll just about the French Revolution and how uh, Marie Antoinette is the last queen of France and she's headed to the guillotine. And the opening scene is pretty gory. They show her going to the guillotine. They show her head getting lopped off. Uh, so that part is kind of hard to watch. Um, but after that, they kind of cut to Napoleon and he's being sent to Toulon to uh, defeat the British there. And it's really, if there's one major fault I have with the movie, they talk about him being a genius and a strategist in the previews, but they don't really show any of that strategy in the movie. I mean, Toulon a little bit. Um, Napoleon mentions how there's one fort that overlooks the harbor that is key to capturing Toulon. So that part is really the only strategy I see in the movie. They do do Austerlitz, but... I mean, other than the uh, lake uh, covered with ice and the cannonballs going through it, there's no real strategy in that. I mean, they briefly talk about the high ground, but I think they could have done a lot more with Austerlitz. Um, Waterloo, yeah, yeah, I'll come back to Waterloo. It doesn't really have any strategy to it. It's just a bunch of armies slamming together. Um Paul Barra, again, as I mentioned, uh, he's in the movie early on. He, he does a good job. The actor plays him. They show, um, this part is pretty cool, at Toulon. They show Napoleon gathering artillery from like around France, which is accurate. Uh, they show a foundry where cannonballs are made. So they show him preparing for this major assault. So that part I really enjoyed, that he's, you know, wandering around. He's doing some spy work, um, trying to get a good look at the Toulon port and harbor. So that part is interesting. You know, Napoleon was not above doing his own scouting as he and Marshal Massena did at the Battle of Agram. Um, so I, I did like that part. Uh, let's see. Toulon Night Assault is fine. Uh, there's a, a very gory horse killed out from under Napoleon. That part's a little strange, but I guess it's to make it that Napoleon's at the front line and they're kind of showing that he was in danger. Oddly enough, though, they don't show him on the siege of Toulon getting stabbed in the thigh with a bayonet, which actually happened. He was stabbed by a, a British sergeant. So I don't know why they didn't show that part. They just show him kind of running up the ramparts with ladders and, and taking this fort overlooking Toulon, which is fine. I, I get they want to show him as a leader on the front lines. Um, so, yeah, they show the British uh, ships getting attacked at Toulon. That's fine. They show Napoleon getting promoted to brigadier general, which is great. That's accurate. Um, and then after Robespierre's death, which is kind of odd, it's, I mean, it, Robespierre did die of the guillotine, but it's just kind of odd how they framed it in the movie. Um, there's a lot of um, ranting and raving. Um, just about, there's, there's different governments, which is kind of hard to follow in the movie. I know. And there were, there were a lot of governments in France at that time, the directory and um, the committee of public safety and all that kind of stuff. But in the, in the movie, if you don't know the story, it's kind of hard to follow which government and who's in charge and all that kind of stuff. So that part's a little murky. Uh, they showed Josephine getting out of prison. They mentioned after the reign of terror, 41,500 prisoners are released from prisons, including Josephine. 
which is why she has that cropped hair in the, the previews. Um, and then she has a party that she goes to where she meets Napoleon. It's like the end of the reign of terror party. Uh, so she meets him there at this survivor's ball. Um, it seems like they cut a lot of dialogue. Or it got edited on the editing, editing room floor. So I remember in the preview, she says, oh, have the fortunes of my life just changed, meeting you and Napoleon. But they don't mention that in the movie. So that must be for the four-hour longer release from Apple TV that's coming out. Um, one part I did like, they show Napoleon being awkward in social settings and at parties, which was pretty accurate. Uh, he was not good, and, and he was kind of an introvert, as we all know. And I mean, other than you know walking around his army and being around his troopers, he wasn't good uh, being around aristocrats and, and being at parties and around politicians. Uh, let's see. Uh, they show the uh, revolt in Paris, 1795. Briefly, the whiff of grape shot. Again, I think they could have done more of this scene. They basically just show Barras saying, all right, you're going to be my second in charge. And then Napoleon, you know, blasts the, um, the rebellion away with cannon shot. Again, it's just, it's very brief. They definitely could have put Marshal Murat in that scene. They could have shown him getting the cannons from Sablon, and they did not. Uh, next up, we have a small wedding, which is accurate. Uh, they have Josephine and Napoleon lying about their ages, which again is accurate. Um, and of course, they have uh, uh, Napoleon trying to kiss Josephine, and she's like politely pushing him away. So that part was kind of kind of interesting. Um, yeah, it, uh, you know, so far it's not a bad movie. Like I'm saying, it's 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 fine, doing good. I have a real problem with Waterloo and everything afterwards, but up until then, it's fine. <clears throat> um, there's some awkward scenes with Napoleon and Josephine, you know, making love. It's probably how it was in real life. Who knows? But it was just kind of the way they shot it was odd. Um, Egypt. Uh, yeah, they kind of skip over the uh, Napoleon's Italian campaign, which I think was a mistake. I think that's where he really earns the army's trust and confidence is in Italy. And they could have done a lot with that that area. But I, I get they, they only have two and a half hours. So they skipped over that. Um, Egypt. Yeah. They show a brief battle in front of the pyramids and it shows him firing cannons into the pyramids, which was kind of silly. I mean, other than for dramatic movie effect, I don't know why, why that scene is in there. Um, there's a little interesting scene uh, where they show Napoleon uh, confronting a mummy. Uh, they go like underneath the pyramid and there's a, a mummy and Napoleon takes it out of the sarcophagus and kind of stares at it like for a while. And he kind of realizes, as, as Napoleon did, that life is short and that, you know, you have to make the most of your time. So I think that part is kind of poignant. I wish the movie had more parts like that. Uh, I kind of enjoyed that. And um, then afterwards, while they're in Italy, uh, Junot, they, for some reason, Junot gets more lines than Marshal Ney or Davu. But he tells Napoleon that uh, Josephine is cheating on him. Obviously, Napoleon is very distraught, and that's what... Uh, precipitates him leaving his army in Egypt, which wasn't the case. Uh, you know, obviously he lost his battles, um, you know, in Palestine and uh, leading into Turkey. So that's why he he actually returned to France and to, uh, of course, usurp power and, and grab the throne. But they say in the movie it's based on Napoleon cheating on him. <clears throat> so obviously he gets back to France. He's very angry with Josephine. That part's accurate throws her stuff out on the lawn. She's crying at his door. That's good. All very good so far. Um, and then they really harp on Josephine's dominance over him, which, I mean, that's debatable. Uh, I don't know. They had a very complicated relationship. So it was just odd. I mean, it was interesting, those 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 parts where it's just him and Josephine, but I, I didn't understand what they were trying to convey there. Um uh, Talleyrand's in the movie a little bit. They could have, again done more with Talleyrand. They just show him kind of like, you know, in parlors and you know salons, like you know, doing Talleyrand things, like talking to people. Um, he returns to France. They show the coup d'état where he uh, becomes first council. They get rid of the uh, five members of the directory. That part is kind of cool. That that's, I mean, as far as we know, somewhat accurate. He goes. He gets thrown out of the legislature by um, all the lawmakers there. 
Then Lucien kind of holds a sword against his chest and says, I'll run this through my brother's chest if he were to ever become a dictator. And then he kind of does like one of these things, like a, let's see what they think of that. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, that part of Lucien, I like that. And then Napoleon goes back in and, of course, with the troops and they basically hold everyone at uh, musket point to to get Napoleon as first council. So that part was was pretty accurate. Um, <clears throat> then Napoleon is kind of talking about um, how while he was away in Egypt, you know, the Austrians and Russians have retaken Italy. And that's why they need a strong guy like him to kind of lead lead the uh, the government. Um Let's see. There's lots of dogs in this movie for whatever reason, just in the background or Josephine's holding a dog, which is fine. Lots of dogs in, in the film. Um, they show Austerlitz. Um, they kind of have a, a brief scene with the, the, uh, the King of Austria or the Emperor of Austria, Francis, and Alexander talking about how they're going to beat Napoleon Austerlitz, which was true. They were pretty overconfident. Uh, again, they could have done more of that scene. I would have liked to see Marshal Kutusov of the Russian army in there saying like, eh, maybe we should be more cautious. Again, time, time limitations. I get why they didn't. Then they show Austerlitz, which is fine, but they show like the Russians and Austrians attacking the, the French in their camp, which is inaccurate. I don't know why they did that. They mentioned the high ground, but they don't really show it. I guess it's hard topographically to show it. I think they could have done more with this scene. Um, and then obviously they show uh, all the allied forces uh, getting hit by cannonballs on the ice as they were treating. It is what it is. I know that did happen. You know, whether it was two men who died in the lake, the frozen lake, or as a hundred men, you know, it's debatable, but I, I get why that's in the movie. Um, this part again, I, the coronation I think is the best part of the movie. I've never seen, I can't remember anyways, where a movie made a piece of artwork come alive. So that artwork, uh, famously at Napoleon, where he's getting, you know, coronated as Emperor of France. This scene where they filmed that and they made it like basically jump out of the, the canvas, immaculately done. So kudos Ridley Scott and your costume team on that scene. And when uh, Josephine becomes Empress and gets the crown on her head. Really, really, really cool. So that part might be worth the price of admission. Uh, no Marengo. So there's no Battle of Marengo. There's no Friedland. No Eilau. So if you're looking for those, it's not in the movie. Um, then it kind of jumps ahead to um, Treaty of Tilsit, where Napoleon is kind of charming Alexander and they're becoming friends. And <clears throat> I don't know. It's, it's fine. But again, probably could have extended that scene a little bit more. Uh, then they kind of jump ahead again to 1812 where Napoleon is invading Russia. It's fine. They show the hit and run tactics of the Cossacks, which is good. I like that. Um, that was pretty good. They show the use of semaphore. That was actually earlier in Austerlitz. They show the use of a uh, uh, sem semaphore and, and communication that Napoleon's army used. Um, so, yeah, the Russian scenes are brief uh there is a cool scene once it gets to moscow like bordino is like basically skipped over i mean it's maybe 30 seconds of the movie um then they get to russia or excuse me moscow they go in napoleon spends the night there he's mad that alexander is left and there's nobody there and there's a great scene where he wakes up and he walks outside and all of moscow is burning and just shows the back of his head uh, with his hat and it basically is like foreshadowing of his empire burning like this is going to be very soon the end of your empire. So that uh, juxtaposition or whatever you want to call it, I think that was, that was well done by the filmmakers. And then after that, they kind of cut to the retreat and then he's exiled. Like they skip over the German campaign and the invasion of France, which again, I get <clears throat> also, uh, I forgot to mention Napoleon and Josephine got divorced and Marie Louise becomes his wife and he has a kid filing, which is, the driving force behind the divorce is Napoleon wanting to have an heir. So they get to all of that. Um, he's exiled <clears throat> to Alba. And then there's, uh, again, the chronology of everything. I know Alexander goes to visit Josephine, you know, and that's when she dies is like 
when she's entertaining Alexander. For whatever reason in the movie, <clears throat> it's insinuated that she's trying to seduce Alexander, which maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, but she dies right there. In the movie, they kind of stretch it out where like it's in the newspapers and tabloids and Napoleon reads it in elevate. He's like, oh my God, my Josephine is being is involved with Alexander, my enemy now. And that's what precipitates his escape from Elba, which whatever. I, they got to connect the love story. So that's probably why they put that in there. So from there, though, Napoleon comes back. He has that famous scene with the 5th Regiment where he stands out in front and says, who will shoot their emperor? Nobody does. They all come to the side and say, long live the emperor, which I like. I like that scene. But Josephine's still alive here. He gets all the way back to uh, Malmaison, meets with Hortense, who says, oh, yeah, you just missed her. She just died like two days ago. So, I mean, we all in, in the story, she dies while he's on Elba. OK, so Ridley Scott, and David Scarpa, for whatever dramatic effect, they made her stay alive until almost Napoleon gets there. Whatever. I, I didn't like that part, that little you know, embellishment of history. It is what it is. Finally, we get to Waterloo. Okay. Ah, <sighs> uh, my. I'm still processing it in my head. It is raining. They do show the wet ground. They do show Marshall Blucher and Wellington kind of converging slowly. And Napoleon's like looking at Wellington. They do have a cool scene, which was, from what I read, accurate, where a sharpshooter said, like, uh, a British sharpshooter is like, I can, get a, I can get a shot at Napoleon right now. And Duke Wellington's like, no, no. Uh, you know, we don't do that to other generals. So that part is is fine. It's just everything after that is, uh, I don't know. They they fire cannons against the British. Then they launch infantry or then they launch cavalry, then infantry again, which that's fine. Uh, they show Wellington, I don't know, he's kind of stodgy. He's not really doing anything. He's just like, you know, I, you know, in the actual battle, he was like, you know, going from, Square to square and from regiment to regiment kind of cheering them on. And this is just kind of sitting on a horse staring at Napoleon. And then Napoleon leads a charge at the end. And he's fighting with a sword at the end at Waterloo. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess you want to make it more dramatic. You want to show him like leading his troops from the front, which he did lead the old guard a little bit of the way at the end. But, you know, he broke off and gave it to Ney, Marshal Ney. But, I don't recall in any history book where he was fighting with his sword hand to hand at Waterloo, but whatever. It's their movie, not mine. <clears throat> so from there, um, you know, it's just uh, Napoleon on the big exile boat to um, uh, St. Helena, and he meets with the Duke of Wellington, which is ridiculous. They never met. But I guess, again, the filmmakers want to have like a Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Billy the Kid, and Pat Garrett interaction scene. So they stuff this in the movie. And it really, the dialogue between them is kind of dumb. And it's it's almost, why is this in the movie? Uh, so I just didn't like that. And then they show him briefly on St. Helena, um, just talking to two girls um, in his exile, and then he dies. So I, I don't know. It, the, the last 30 minutes of the movie, I just... It didn't jive with me that well. Everything else is fine. Like the dedication to the art, like the camera angles, like the costume, the script is fine until the last like 30 minutes or so. Um, overall, would I see it again? Yeah, probably I, I would. I'm Napoleon Buff, as you guys know. Uh, you know, could it be done better? Yeah, it probably. Could I have done it better? No. I'm not a filmmaker and uh, I'm not a writer. Um, they're just bits that I I had problems with. But overall, it's a fine movie. I just, maybe it needs a mini series or kind of like The Crown where you have season one, you know, Napoleon comes to power. Season two, Counselet. Season three, Coronation. Season four, Austerlitz, Friedland, Eilau, you know, Treaty of Tilsit. Season five, you know, Invasion of Russia. Season six, you know, and so on and so on. So maybe it needs more of that treatment where you could kind of build story arcs and character arcs and have more investment in the, uh, the kind of minor characters. Like I said, Hortense and Eugene are barely in it. Uh, the marshals are barely in it. Colin core a little bit. 
Uh, so you Colin Court fans, you, you'll get a little bit of him. Uh, but yeah, overall, six out of 10. Yes, you should see it, I think, just to get your Napoleon fill. Uh, and, you know, let me know what you think. I'm here, but I uh, I just want to hop on and give my two cents. I Again, appreciate every one of you for watching um, my YouTube page and for listening to the podcast. And I will see you soon. Thanks so much.